Okay, one, two, three. In the beginning, of course, Dixie was um, a walk around at the end of a end of a minstrel show, and was the opportunity to get everybody out on stage in their own characters, in their own costumes, dancing in their own kind of way to give a climax to the show. I wish I was in the land of cotton, old time there I'm not forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixieland. Look, it seems quite possible maybe even quite likely that Emmett got this tune if not the words of the song but maybe even the words of the song or some of the words of the song from the Snowden family. The Snowdens were a musical black family who lived in northern Ohio. They were the only black family there for, for actually quite a wide radius but they, were, but they were very very musical and people knew them as a musical family. I like to think that they played together and Dan Emmett just happened to learn the tune because he was playing with them. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can take it. But, you know, people, people have to have music and people have to learn music from other people. And also it's community, so you have to play music with your community, no matter who they are. Composition to these folk is not like we think of composition. These are people who lived in a folk tradition where music was disseminated orally, and it's extremely common that you'll take one tune, you'll put a new text to it. When a song becomes a national hit, as Dixie was, it has to have a much more genericized meaning. Simmons Seed and Sandy Bottom wouldn't mean anything to somebody who was trying to sing this in their parlor but old times there are not forgotten would mean a lot to Americans who are looking nostalgically even then at the good old days as America is changing. So it's not surprising that Emmett might have changed those lyrics to something more generally appealing and generic. For every famous white person in country music and in, in blues music, Sometimes there is a, a, a picture or a face to the black person, but there's usually a black person hanging around somewhere on the scene, whether it's direct, unconscious, or whatever it may be. Black people play it, white people write it down. Yeah. I mean, it's just happened over and over and over again. This is a situation where you actually know the black person behind the tune, but there are, most of the time, you don't know who it is. And so it's kind of a remarkable thing. And there's still gonna be people who say, well, it's still, we still don't know for sure, but it's the best we got, you know, and they've done a lot of research and it's just like, if we can put a black face to a tune, you know, even if it's not 100% sure, why not? Popular music in this country has percolated up from the bottom. It has come from people who weren't versed in reading score notation, who were musical by ear. We pass tunes not through passing on a piece of music, but by playing the tune and you picking up the tune. You know, the South is way more complicated than people want to admit. You know, it's like you get all these stories about the South and it's all, you know, it's all racism and it's all poverty and it's all this and that. I mean, this, the South is, is just, it's a, it's a region of the country, you know, that people like to simplify, but it's, it's, it's complicated like anything else. broke out, uh, a lot of the music publishers came out with fife and drum manuals because the fife and drum were the musical instruments of the army. One manual was published in Chicago by one of the big publishers there in 62 by George Bruce and Daniel Decatur Emmett, who was a fifer in the United States Army. And Dan puts right in there his fife and drum version of Dixie. 
for the Union troops to play while they're in camp. Because Dixie had not been established as the Southern anthem yet. It was just a song about the South. After the Civil War, Dixie quickly became a symbol of the Southern lost cause. And there's no, no question that that's what it embodies yet today. It's too bad, really, we can't enjoy that tune much for what it is without thinking about the symbol for what it stands for anymore. Dixie and the Confederacy are intertwined. Uh, you can't separate them. And what did the Confederacy represent? Uh, it's slavery. Nobody black was singing Dixie down here. Nobody black was playing it at school functions or uh, any events. You only heard it when you were in a white venue. In my mind, it is very hard to disentangle 1948, the use of the Confederate flag and playing Dixie from the politics of the moment. And people can say, oh yes, it's related to the Civil War and our deep love of the Confederacy and the lost cause and our, and our fallen ancestors. And, and some of that may be so, but you cannot, in my mind, divorce it from that moment that it began to stand for a particular political view. And people can say states' rights, and yes, states' rights to maintain our system of segregation and our strong belief in white supremacy and that the black residents of Mississippi and other southern states should have but only so many rights, period. I understand the history of Dixie. I know the irony of Dixie being written by a black man. But that doesn't make it right today. Um, the groups who galvanized around the song Dixie, around the Confederate flag, um, did so for some very real and hateful reasons. You know, I'm the established person here. My song has been in existence. So if you're going to come take it away from me or silence it, I want to know why. I don't want it just to happen and you give me the highbrow treatment of, well, it's the right thing to do. We've got to be inclusive. Well, how can you be inclusive if you're going to be taking something away from me? That's not being very inclusive. I don't think anybody sat down and talked about it, but it was just this awareness that the song Dixie, the rebel flag, and the word nigger were incendiary, were things that you just did not ever have equate with anything good. Oh, I wish I was in the land of cotton. Old times they are not forgotten. When Ole Miss would do well uh, and would score something and, and I would cheer, uh, the song Dixie would come on and I would get pelted uh, with all type of garbage. And, uh, and so that song soon began to take on very negative connotations uh, to me. Uh, it was nothing that I could actually be proud of, nothing that I could participate in singing. So our thoughts were simple. If we could get America to see how the University of Mississippi was treating uh, its students, then it would be different. Things would change. Dixieland, well, I wish I was in Dixie. Just because you like Dixie and you like the Civil War and Confederacy doesn't mean you're a racist. It doesn't mean that at all. The South has a, has a large number of traditions, and there should not be a blanket acceptance of these traditions across the board. 
in terms of that it, ha it means this to me, and so that's what it should mean to everybody. Away down south in Dixie. Dixie belongs in a music museum. It doesn't belong in contemporary America. Away down south in Dixie. What things like Dixie can do is get people talking to one another. The hard part is getting to listen to one another.